Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you for tuning in to worship with us at Church Street, United Methodist Church. As we begin our time of worship, I want to highlight a few announcements. The first of which is that we will be having a virtual blessing of the animals. And that will be online on our Facebook and YouTube pages on October 29th. If you would like to submit a picture of your animal, friend, or pet, you may do so by sending it to the email below. And it will be included in the service that I lead with my own canine assistant, my dog Waffles. Also coming up, you should have received, if you're on the mailing list, you should have received some information in the mail about the beginning of our stewardship campaign, the theme of which is greatest commandment, love God, love your neighbor. In worship throughout so the rest of the month, you will see mission moments that highlight some of the ways that we love God and love neighbor through our missions. But I also encourage you to go on to the website, churchstreetumc.org backslash greatest and look through all of the wonderful ways that this church engages in mission and worship and ministering to the community um, because of the ways that you have committed and pledged and supported this church. If you would like to drop off your pledge card, you might do so next Sunday, October 25th, on our Commitment Sunday by driving by between the hours of 11 and 2 p.m. to drop off that Commitment card. We look forward to hopefully seeing you then and celebrating the ways that God is involved in all that we do here at Church Street UMC. Now as we gather and begin our time of worship, may the Holy Spirit move and unite us in this time.
Will you join me in our call to worship this morning? We are called to recognize and join God's mission of love. We gather to become more like Jesus. We learn how grace has met other lives. We wait for God's empowering presence to open our eyes. We engage our neighbors online and in person. And God's love, power, and justice help repair the world. Amen. And if you will join us now in our hymn, Christ for the World We Sing, it's number 568 in the hymnal. Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of grace and God of glory, transform our hearts by the power of your love. We come here together to rejoice, to worship, to love, and to serve. Help us live our lives as a response to your love, knowing that all good things come from your hands. Empower us to love you with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our strength. Help us to be a light of love to the world around us and live as your children, created in your image so that the world will know you live. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Good morning. I'd like to invite all the children to gather up, get comfy, and listen up. Today, we're going to talk about a word and it's stewardship. Now that's a pretty big word and it has a pretty big meaning. We tend to think that stewardship just means about giving money, which it does, but it also means about giving our gifts and our service and our time. And right now we're in our stewardship season here at church. And so this week and this month and these next few months coming up, I want you all to think about ways that you can give back to God and to the church. Now, yes, money is important, but that's not the only thing you can do. Maybe you can go around and collect toys that you don't play with and give them to a charity that needs toys for kids. Christmas is coming up. Maybe you can go help find Christmas gifts for others who may not be able to afford it. You all, those who sing in the choir, that's a talent and gift that you share with the congregation. 
And that's a stewardship thing too. So I want you as a child, as an adult, as a family, to think and dig deep. Think about some of the hard things that might be something giving back to God, whether it's a talent, a gift, a service, or money. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so blessed and thankful that you give us special gifts and talents. We ask that we can use each of those gifts and talents to serve you and serve those around us. We ask that you help us see ways that we can serve you and serve our church. We pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. Last week in our mission moment, we heard from missionaries who serve far away in South Sudan. This week, we hear from missionaries Jody and Christina Dolingsaka, who serve in our own country, but still far away, in Willow, Alaska. Listen to all that they are doing in God's name. Well, I'm Christina, and I am one of the co-pastors here um, in Willow, Alaska, and also I work a lot with our food pantry. I am uh, Joe D. Dowling Soka and married to Christina and one of the co-pastors here in Willow and, and have uh, served on um, McKinley Fire Recovery Group, which we can talk about later, and a few other things like that. Um, if there's something that you wish that um, Church Street United Methodist Congregation could understand about your ministry, what makes it unique. Um, One of the things that I think makes it unique is you really become the pastor and you become the church for the whole community. Um, and it's been exciting to see how Willow has uh, done that across the years. So uh, particularly when Fran Lynch was the, the missionary appointed here, uh, always looking outward to the to the community. So they would get a dream of, we don't have a health clinic, let's work together and get a clinic here, along with others in the community. Or they would have a dream and we don't, we, we don't know how these people can get to the food pantry or to the clinic in the cold, so let's start a transportation system. Or we have a dream right now, uh, on Friday, uh, several have been, of the Method, United Methodists have been involved with others in the community to get funding for a new library. So there's groundbreaking on Friday for the library. So, uh, and we, the partnership. Uh, so to be at Willow, um, I would have them know that it's being about the whole community, seeking loan or God's peace for the whole, whole community. We would just want to say how deeply grateful we are to you and what fun it has mm -hmm. been to have this conversation today. And also just thank you. Uh, thank you again to Church Street for uh, not only what you do up here in Alaska, but um, in your neighborhood, in so many ways, pouring faith into life. Friends in Christ, God invites us to hold the needs of our sisters and brothers as dear to us as our own needs. Loving our neighbors as ourselves, we offer our thanksgivings and our petitions on behalf of the church in the world.
Will you join me in our prayer for illumination this morning? Your love, O God, is active, engaged, and involved. You have made us in your image. You have shown us mercy and kindness. You have given us grace and peace. Open your words to us this morning. Teach us love as you have loved us. Teach us to love in mercy and kindness. Teach us to share in grace and peace. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is on this? Whose, whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and the things that are God's to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of my daily habits, just after prayer and meditation and the New York Times mini crossword puzzle, is to open my email from Merriam-Webster to see the word of the day. And if you are a recipient of the Merriam-Webster email of the day, you know that you try to use that word throughout the day just real matter-of-factly, showing off your vocabulary skills. Well, the word of the day for Thursday, this past Thursday, was cologue, C-O-L-L-O-G-U-E. It's a verb. It means to intrigue or conspire, to talk privately or confer. It's not really a familiar word, and it's not a word that has positive connotations. If I were to say in front of everyone at the end of staff meeting, Kate, may I, may I collogue with you after the meeting? It would raise some eyebrows and people would be suspicious. You don't announce that you are colloguing you might say when you see others, pray tell, what are those co-workers colloguing about? Or what is that colloguing going on in the parking lot after the meeting? Thankfully, our gospel text comes from Matthew 21, where there has been plenty of colloguing, and I get to use that word. If we start back before the scripture that you heard this morning, this is towards the end of Jesus's life as he is preparing. He has just entered Jerusalem in chapter 21 and enters the temple and cleanses it, turns tables over. Pharisees and others come to him and ask him, by whose authority have you done all this? They ask him questions in the temple and they confer. They say, if we ask him this and he says that, then we're in trouble. If we ask him that, then he'll say that and the people will rile up. He tells parables and they collogue. I think he's talking about us. Well, what should we ask him now? What do you think? And then we hear this question about the taxes. And in verse 15 of chapter 22, we see some true bipartisanship. That's another word we don't hear very often these days. But there is bipartisanship between the Pharisees and the Herodians. They are both Jewish, but they have opposing views about who should be on the throne. The Pharisees very much want someone from the lineage of David. The Herodians want a Herod. But when you see opposing groups working together and starting with flattery, 
there has been some colloguing. And I promise that's, the, I won't, really won't use that word anymore. It's such a good word. These religious leaders are really not interested in pecuniary matters. Again, thank you, Miriam Webster. They're not really interested in finances. It is all about getting Jesus to say just the right thing so they can bring legitimate charges against him to the Roman authorities and at the same time diminish his popularity among the crowd. If you are a Star Wars fan, you can hear Admiral Akbar warning Jesus during these last chapters of Matthew, it's a trap. Well, Jesus knows it's a trap. The Pharisees and the Herodians are the ones who perhaps need to be warned. Jesus traps them in their own accusations. Yes, there is a temple tax to be paid, and there are coins that are permissible to bring into the temple. However, the Pharisees are asking about the Roman tax. Is it legal to pay taxes to the government, they are asking. Well, this conversation can go off in all kinds of directions. You've probably had some of these conversations at the dinner table or in Sunday school. Should Christians pay taxes? Are there certain things Christians shouldn't fund? Are people of faith bowing down to the government when we pay taxes? Are we loyal to Caesar during the week and loyal to Jesus on Sunday and that's how our lives are? Are there things that we should not contribute to? Is there a more equitable formula for figuring out federal income tax? I could share with you how much I love paying taxes, and I do. It makes me feel patriotic. I drive on interstates. It's easy to get from point A to point B because of roads that I did not have to design or pave. I sleep peacefully at night, never worrying about war because we have military all over the world in places I'm not even aware of who are there to protect me. I like putting letters in the mailbox with the little postage stamp. I trust the FDA when I go to a, a doctor and receive a drug or when I had my children vaccinated that all of these things had been tested properly. When I go to the grocery store and buy meat there at the butcher counter that there are certain standards. Uh, candy corn, we're coming up on Halloween. I don't think candy corn meets any FDA requirements, but that's, an, that's just a, an opinion. We could go into all these other questions about taxes and what Christians should fund, but to begin preaching about taxes is falling into a trap. It diverts us from the question at hand. We could take this scripture as a preacher especially and say, oh, this is a perfect text for Stewardship Emphasis Month. Pay your taxes and other obligations and give everything else to the church. Give to God what is God's. That too is a trap. This is not how you decide what you give to the church by determining what is left over. Jesus addresses that in other scriptures. We could use this text to talk about the offering, what it means to say your commitment, your tithes, your offerings, they are not a tax or a fee. As you fill out your commitment card at the end of the month, Jesus reminds you to give to God what is God's. There's probably other scripture we could use to talk about that. So what is it that Jesus is wanting us to focus on? The Pharisees have hopefully set him in one direction, but he has turned our focus in a different direction. What is he hoping this group that we will learn? Jesus asks the Pharisees, and it's really not Pharisees, it's sort of like their interns, their disciples, to bring them a coin. And here these eager Pharisee pleasers bring forth a coin that should not be in the temple. 
and we can hear the older, wiser Pharisees joining in with General Akbar. Oh, it's a trap. Don't do it. As they hand Jesus a coin. Whose image is on this coin, he asks. They've managed to break the first two commandments so innocently. You know those commandments. You shall have no other gods before, you, before me, God says. And you shall not make for yourself any graven image. And here, Jesus, here is a coin that says Caesar is God. And here's his picture. But Jesus does not say, oh, I trapped you, I got you. He does not lecture them on the Torah or scold them for their blind allegiance. Whose image is on this coin? What an important question. It is a good one for us to begin with as we are thinking about stewardship and budgets and commitment cards and all that we have. Whose image is on this coin? Well, Caesar. And as he hands it back to them, he says, well, then give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. After breaking the first two commandments, by bringing that graven image into the temple and being asked about image, surely these scholars of the scriptures have that word ringing in their ears. Image. Image. And it harkens back to creation. Where did we hear that word? As God says, let us create humankind in our image. We are created in the image of God. Jesus does call them hypocrites, which means we are pretending to be someone we are not. We have put on a false image. As we look in the mirror, whose image do we see? Let us create humankind in our image. Our minds do go back to the story of creation in the beginning. And while we are asking questions such as, how much should I give to the church? Do I tithe the gross or the net? If I'm planning on giving at the end of the year, you know, do I give one lump sum or should I give something monthly? Is my offering going to a good cause? Yes. And the church is not a cause. But if you want to see where it's going, you can look on the website under the, the stewardship, all the wonderful ministries that we are doing. How much do I give to get a good tax credit? What are the benefits of prepaying my pledge? But those are all good questions and questions that you should talk over with the people you live with or a good financial advisor who I hope is also a person of faith, you can ask me. But instead of starting with those questions, which are legitimate questions, Jesus starts with another question about whose image we see. If we start with those other questions that are purely financial, perhaps we're setting a trap for ourselves. We are making ourselves the giver of the gift instead of the receiver of all the gifts. So instead of starting with the question of, of how much and when and what percentage, we begin with an affirmation. And this isn't just about commitment cards. It's about anything we do in life. We begin with the affirmation I am created in the image of God. It is God who has breathed life into me. God is the source of all the gifts. It's not that I have gifts and I'm giving a portion to God. We could never pay back God. We receive life 
we receive gifts from God and we respond with thanksgiving. I love the, the prayers that Pastor Jan sends out Monday through Thursday. The, the title of that prayer series is called Binding Soul and Source. Binding Soul and Source. Acknowledging that God is the source of all good gifts. We sing that in the doxology each week. Let us make humankind in our image. When we stop to think that we are created in the image of God, that he desires to be with us, we cannot help but respond with gratitude and thanksgiving. In the class that um, I'm participating in, I was going to say I'm leading, but the, the people are leading me as well on uh, Diana Butler Bass's book, Grateful. She talks about the process of gratitude, that first we, we pay attention to a gift. We appreciate it. And the completion of gratitude is when we respond. Letting someone know of how thankful we are or passing on a gift, living a grateful life. So attention, appreciation, and then response. Your life and how you live your life how you manage your finances, how you treat your children, how you love your neighbor, how you take care of creation. That is all a response to God's gift to you. Before you quickly fill in the blank on a commitment card later this month, I invite you to spend time first receiving the gift from God and acknowledging the gift that you have received. He is the giver of life and your life. He has given birth to this world and breathed life in us. We start first with that affirmation. And we appreciate it. We give thanks. And we respond. I wanted to, to share with you this um, poem. I'm not going to read the whole poem for you. It comes from God's Trombones, and it's the poem titled The Creation by James Weldon Johnson. He died in 1938. He was an African-American writer and poet. He was a civil rights activist, but a wonderful poet. And I love the way he captures God creating this larger-than-life he says, and God stepped out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely. I'll make me a world. And far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and the light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun, and he set that sun up blazing in the heavens. And Johnson uses beautiful words to go on to describe setting the sun up in the sky and then making the moon that was on his left and the stars that are clustered about his head and the earth under his feet and God walking around on the earth and his footsteps hollowing the valleys out and bulging the mountains up. And when God looks and sees how barren the earth is, this is what Johnson says. So God stepped over to the edge of the world and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes and the lightnings flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled and the waters above the earth came down. The cooling waters came down. And he goes on to talk about the green grass and the red flowers and the pine trees and the oaks spreading out their arms and the rainbow appearing and curling itself around God's shoulder. Bring forth, bring forth, God's voice booms out. And he raises his arms, he claps his hands, and birds and fish and beasts appear. 
Then God walked around, and God looked around on all that he had made. He looked at his sun, he looked at his moon, and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world with all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely still. And then he paints this picture for us of God sitting down and putting his head in his hands and thinking and thinking until he says, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay, and by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there the great God Almighty who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corner of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hand, this great God, like a mammy bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. What a giving, giving God we serve. I pray that we might receive the gift of life that he has given to us. Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Will you please join me in the affirmation of faith about stewardship? We believe in God, creator of the universe, giver of every good gift, author of life itself. We believe in Jesus Christ, who reminded us of the coming of God's kingdom, who commanded us to care for those in need, who taught us to store up treasures in heaven, not on earth, and who gave us the example of self-giving love. We believe in the Holy Spirit who inspires us to faithful stewardship of God's gifts, in whom we live and move and have our being, by whom all things are possible. We believe that God has given us gifts to be shared freely and generously in a spirit of love and joy. We acknowledge that we are merely stewards of all that is God's, caretakers of God's home. We believe that faithful stewardship is an act of worship, a means of praising God who has blessed us so abundantly. We believe that God has great things in store for us, for it is in giving that we receive. Next Sunday, we will make our commitments to Church Street's missions and ministries for 2021 operating budget. By now, you should have received this card in the mail. Let's see if I can hold it up. And a letter from Pastor Catherine. We will have a drive through commitment card drop off on Commitment Sunday. That's next Sunday, October 25th, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. You can bring your card and place it in a basket or mail your pledge to the church office. Or you can make your pledge online by visiting the link on the screen. Thank you for joining me as we recommit to Church Street this year through our gifts, our prayers, our presence, our service, and our witness. Will you join me in prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving God, you are steadfast, forever enfolding, even when we cannot accept ourselves. May your spirit empower us to imitate you by receiving those who feel judged or rejected, by walking alongside those who despair, by encouraging those who tend to the broken, by affirming those who labor in love. We lift into your tender care those whose bodies, minds, or spirits have been weakened or crushed. We lift up to your compassionate care those whose burdens, guilt, or fears seem too massive to bear. We lift before your expansive mercy those whose hatred, rage, or vengeance cannot be contained. Receive all these cares, loving God, and fill us with the light of Christ through the work of your Spirit as we join together with the confidence of your children to pray that prayer your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We leave this time of worship to go into our homes, our community, our world, and continue worshiping God by all that we do and say. And as we do that, may we know full well the love of Almighty God, the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and for always. Amen.